Nicholas Falkrook is unsettled in the UK. That's the latest update from the club at, what it was, Saturday afternoon, basically, Saturday lunchtime. Uh, look, no big surprise to me, it has to be said. I've been saying on this channel for the past week or two, I did not expect Nicholas Falkrook to be here next season. Wasn't sure he'd last much beyond January. I think he's probably going to go in January now anyway. Uh, but to have the club come out and say he's unsettled in the UK is probably like the, the final bit of damning confirmation that we needed. And, well, I say we needed, we didn't need to hear that at all. It was yet another abject failure from a big money striker at West Ham. I'll tell you what's been said, and, and these are the quotes from a, a top source at the London Stadium, which is uh, uh, Nicholas Fulkrug is not, is not un about to undergo an operation. There were some that were suggesting that he was going to be heading for an operation very, very soon. That's not the case at all. I don't think the club understand fully what's wrong with him, so we haven't got a complete diagnosis, but... We haven't got a diagnosis to such an extent we can't diagnose what's wrong with him. And if you don't can't uh, diagnose what's wrong with someone, you can't start taking a scalpel to him, I guess, and start fixing um, what's wrong. But uh, it did go on to say, however, he is unsettled in the UK. Uh, the quote did end up with saying, we hope, uh, we hope for some improvement because Tim Stighton has assured, basically, club sources that uh, Fulkrug is a grafter and a workaholic. Um, but he's unsettled in the UK. Uh, let's see what happens in the next few weeks. Th this is not good talk, not at all. And I, I believe it, by the way. I don't think it's a pack of lies because why would you? Um, why would you give out bad news on purpose? Surely, the, if you were going to do um, a proper, like, sort of fluffy press release or something like that, and then you'd say we expect him back in a couple of weeks, and so on and so forth. He's going to go on and score lots of goals, West Ham. That's the type of thing that you would expect. We ain't getting that at all. And I think this is a, another disaster of a striker. It has to be said, I think he's going to go probably back to the Bundesliga. That wouldn't surprise me at all. I think upon his return, you'll probably find, much like uh, Gianluca Scamacca before him, that uh, the injury will... Um, will basically go away and he'll start playing. I'm not I'm not accusing him of feigning injury, by the way. I'm not accusing him of that, just to be clear. And I think you'll probably find he'll start scoring goals for whoever he signs for. But make no mistake about it, West Ham will make a big loss. I wouldn't be surprised if we have to flog this guy for £15 million or something like that. Those are my figures, by the way, and I've just plucked them completely out of thin air. But... Uh, if you're going to dispute that, how much do you think we'd get? We certainly ain't getting the £27 million that we paid for him. And as um, Alex Ray, who is the Bundesliga expert for ESPN, told Gio over on um, our main Hammers Chat channel when we interviewed him, he said West Ham overpaid for this guy. Uh, he really did. Uh, he said, Alex Ray said, he said is there's a perception that there is a a Premier League price and there's a price for everybody else. And I think it was even... Um, I, what was even Paul Krugham said himself that said he wasn't planning on moving, but West Ham, nobody could match the money that West Ham came up with. So, so much of this stuff is clearly about money now. And it's it's a big worry, a big, big worry for West Ham. Um, you're going to have to excuse me while I interrupt you. Not because I'm about to promote Manscaped, which I'll do in a second, but because I've got to move a puppy who is biting my Ethernet cable. And that's not a euphemism. Anyway, so... Anyway, absolutely disgraceful. I'm more concerned with the fact that he's under the wheels of this, this chair, so I'm, I'm making extra sure. It's a dangerous place to be, what with me losing me gas and all the rest of it. Anyway, um, so, yeah, really, really bad news from um, Nicholas Fulkrug on, on that sense. And I think, what can I say? I, I didn't particularly want to be right on it, but didn't expect him to last the season. I would have preferred it if he'd have proved everybody wrong and he turned out better than... Um, John Duran or anybody else. But I think you can read into this that West Ham will be looking for another striker. It's not going to suddenly, miraculously turn itself around. And, and this is off the back of yesterday the club released the official team photos. You know the type of thing. You used to do it at school. Um, little, little people at the front um, and um, sat on benches, uh, medium-sized people in the middle and all the big, all the big lads. Uh, stood at the back, your, your goalkeepers, your centre-backs and your big, chunky, um, big, tall uh, target men uh, at the back. For the, the squad photo, um, a full crew wasn't there. Now, it was it was released yesterday. The pictures were released and the video, basically. They'd make these little fun videos of, of people, you know, sitting on the bench and getting all lined up and the photographers there taking a the picture. Fulkrug wasn't in the videos, but uh, miraculously, uh, he was actually in the picture. And I think most people would accept that he's been photoshopped into the picture, which, uh, and I think it was uh, the Boschmeister himself, a uh, big Tom Skinner, 
who actually acted as a body double, and then they took they uh, like superimposed full crook uh, on top. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, how how bad is that? Actually, I don't mind that. I think that's a little bit of fun. I just think maybe the club, if that is the case, I'm not sure that is the case, but that's that's what I've heard anyway. If that is, if that was, then the club probably just could have come out and owned that. That would have been quite a fun thing to do. That probably would have been a video in itself. Um, you know, the day, the day Tom pretended to be Nicholas Fulkrug. I'll, I'll tell you what, would not surprise me if Tom Skinner scores more goals for West Ham or he has an equal goal record to Nicholas Fulkrug. Um, I, I mean, I remember Frankie saying uh, with Gio at the start of the season, he said he didn't think he'd, he'd score 10 goals. Uh, didn't think Fulkrug would score 10 goals for West Ham. Um, I, I, I didn't think he'd last a season. This this is this is a nightmare, an absolute nightmare uh, of a transfer. Uh, before I go any further, can I please uh, point you in the direction of my my brand new pube trimmer, uh, which has come from Manscaped. I say pube trimmer. Look, it's here. It's in the case. This is the Manscaped 5.0. This is in the case because really the one Manscaped product that I use above and beyond all others is actually their beard trimmer. It is the best male grooming aid that has ever been made, in my humble opinion. Look, I, I, believe it or not, I haven't had, actually had a wet shave since it's 2012, or, uh, October 27th, 2012. That's the last time I actually had a wet shave. So I've been using clippers and trimmers and, and beard shavers and stuff like that for years and years and years. This stuff is the best. The Manscaped Beard Trimmer is brilliant because actually you can adjust the length and the grade that you want your, your beard or your moustache to be. Anyway, best of all, they do the, not only do the best, do the best products, we're going to give you 20% off of everything plus free shipping. All you've got to do when you go onto the Manscaped website, you can go and Google it, you don't, uh, or you can click the link below. But uh, there'll be a discount code. It'll ask you if you've got a discount code. You do. It's Hammers Chat Pubes, all one word. Maybe not just for you. They do aftershaves. They do appointments. <laughs> Nobody uses that word anymore, apart from me, it seems. You know, soothing balms, boxer shorts, um, ear roll trimmers, Uta trimmers, um, shavers, dinkle shavers, anything you want, really. They've got it all, and we're going to give you 20% off. So if you want to buy your granddad a pube trimmer, then uh, we're going to give you 20% off so as uh, and enable you to do so. Links in the description below. Uh, that's manscaped. Um, Full crook. What can you say? I'll tell you the other thing that I think this absolutely means. It means we're going to be buying a striker or loaning a striker, getting a striker in in January. What a farce, by the way. I mean, we have to, especially if we don't, and we try and see out the rest of the season with Antonio and Danny Ings. I'm only laughing, not because it's funny, but it's sort of gallows humour. We're so bad at this stuff. So incredibly, incredibly bad. Uh, I think it was... Um, it was Lopetegui, wasn't it, a couple of months ago, who was demanding that West Ham buy, loan, whatever, bring in a striker in the January transfer window. And I thought, well, mate, you know, you're not particularly in a position of power at the moment to be demanding anything at all. But um, you can sort of understand it from his point of view. And his argument would be, Lopetegui, is that he's not had the, the best backing um, to get the, his job done at West Ham. Now, I, I, I think that's... That's a bit of a weak argument because I do think he's been given an awful lot. I really do. Um, and I think even with a striker, we'd still be struggling. We wouldn't have moved up and, and improved any more on what David Moyes was doing. That's for certain. So I do think he'd have improved us a bit, but not an awful lot. But I do think he's got a point. And it just goes to show the folly of, of this happening. We would go and chase John Duran and chase Samu Omorodian, who, who are sim have similarities in the way that they play, and then we don't get either of those. We go and buy a completely different player. Really, not just a completely different player, a player whose injury record is horrendous. I'm a little bit disappointed we didn't even scratch below the surface on this channel before we signed him. But as you will know, if you've been a watcher for quite some time, um, we've been... I didn't believe we were going to sign him. I really didn't. Sorry, I'm being distracted here. Zippy, come here. You want to see him? Of course you do. Of course you do. I keep getting messages about him. There he is. There we go. What do you What do you think about... Um, look at his paws. He's got big paws. Can you see him? Nice paws. Mm? He's a good boy, actually. He's gone through the night. He slept through the night. There he is. Haven't you? You're a good boy. You are, you are a good boy, aren't you? You want to get back to eating... Um, He's eating all sorts of things he shouldn't be eating. But there he goes. He's found a tennis ball and he loves it at the moment. Get back to um, eating eating his tennis ball, or should I say eating my son's tennis ball. It's all right, they can be replaced. Um, 
Yeah, I, anyway, you, you, you know what I'm saying. All, all this stuff about buying strikers and all, all the rest of it. Not very good. Not very good at all. Um, and it's just typical West Ham. I just would keep getting this stuff wrong. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just saying about buying. It wasn't, sorry, lost me trying to talk there. Um, you know, bringing in a striker, a totally different striker in a transfer window. So somebody's messed up massively here. Somebody has messed up. And I think certainly it's hard, it's hard to make the case that this is Lopetegui signing or Sullivan signing. It's, it's really hard. In fact, you don't, you don't even need to make the case because um, Paul Kruger said himself, didn't he? He said, I signed because of Tim. I know Tim. He's known Tim for quite some time. I mean, he did actually say that, didn't he? So I signed for money and Tim Stighton. Crikey. How bad is this? I mean, uh, if, look, if it was just a one-off, you could perhaps pass it off. But the money that we've lost in strikers over the years, not just the big money ones like Hilaire, like Skamaka, which is a lot of money. So what did we lose? We lost £20 million on Hilaire. We lost £10 million in a season on Skamaka. I reckon we'll lose another 10 at least on this guy. It's like we start every season with a £10 million deficit. It's crazy. Uh, anyway, there you go. Um, well, I'd, I'd tell you something, cheer you up and all the rest of it. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, look, we did, just to let you know, we asked you for a lot of ideas, which we've done the video. So probably tomorrow and, and the day after, which is Monday, for those of you that are not counting, uh, we'll, we'll be producing a couple of videos that myself and Gio have already recorded uh, based on your video suggestions. So, um, But I couldn't not do this today. It's, it's breaking news. It's um, I was going to sit down. I've started watching The Penguin. Have anyone watched The Penguin? That's quite good, by the way. And I started watching The Penguin. I was going to chill out on the sofa and watch The Penguin today um, while Zippy ate the lounge, basically. We've been out. Anyway, we've been out for a little stroll today. But come back and then um yeah look at this absolutely crazy mental news so uh yeah i had to do it anyway um has anyone seen nicholas full kruger i think not because he couldn't even turn up in the team photo